Hello, baby. First trip across the channel? No. Going to London, huh? That's evident, isn't it? You don't remember me, do you? Since I've never seen you before, I'm afraid I don't. Well, I'm the guy that was standing at the doorway when you came out of our Bremen's place in Paris this morning. El Bremen's? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't try to kid me, sister. A great Egyptian that sells drugs. You're mistaken. Please go away from me. Where have you got this stuff? In there? Keep your hands off me. Ah. I said keep your hands off me. <laughs> Let me alone, do you hear me? Hey. I... I just got him to sleep. Come on, boy, he wakes up and wants his bottle. You made one of my fondest dreams come true. And what might that be? To rescue a lovely lady in distress. I'm so glad. How does it feel to be a hero? Terrible, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm your own true knight, you must tell me your name so I can wear your favor on my shining armor. No. I can't tell you. Please don't ask. Well, if you don't tell me your name and where I can find you, how do you expect me to ever see you again? I don't expect you to. Please don't even try. Hey, what kind of Arabian night stuff is this? Oh, I... I can't explain, but... Well, you're an American and so am I. And that's all we can ever know about each other. Oh, I see. Then I'm just supposed to forget you ever existed. Please do. All right, Miss Mystery. If you won't tell me, I'll find out for myself. When you make up your mind to anything, you don't fool around, do you? Yeah, I'm sorry. Should have thrown me overboard instead of the bag. The Sherlock Holmes of my own, my native land. I heard you're in town, so I thought I'd drop by and say hello. Well, sit down. Take the weight off your mind. Oh, thanks. See, you ditch your work fast. I haven't been in London an hour. I bet the ink isn't even dry on the hotel register downstairs. Well, then it's a little early to ask you how you like London. <laughs> For the love of Pete, how did you find out I was here? <laughs> Professional secret. We can't give him away. What are you doing in London, Tom? I'm looking for a murderer. I see. You can't find any in the States. You have to come to London to find one. <laughs> I did for this one. Who did he kill? Oh, a book collector in Chicago. Now, why would anyone want to kill a book collector in Chicago? That's what the police want to find out. Hey, what's the matter with your hand? Oh, that I bumped that against romance. So you ought to wear boxing gloves when you're globe trotting. What happened? Oh, played hero coming over from Calais. I see. Same old story. Pretty girl, fresh guy, boom. Oh, no, no. She wouldn't even tell me her name. Oh, smart girl. Well, Barry, I guess I'll have to hop along. Would you hurry, Tom? Well, I'm pretty busy. I'll see you later. When are you leaving for the States? Not till I find that girl. Oh, is this thing serious? Oh, no, only I'm going to marry her. Oh, that's pretty serious. <laughs> I wonder who else knows I'm in town. Hmm, that girl of yours is a pretty fast worker. Ink isn't dry on the register and you're getting notes, huh? <laughs> it's my lawyer named Coventry. Oh, a breach of promise suit already, huh? Now, how do you like this? He signs himself my obedient servant and commands me to come to his office tomorrow. <laughs> well, good luck, Barry. Don't sign anything I wouldn't. I'll call you later, let you know where you can reach me. Okay, let's get together soon, John. Yeah, so long, old boy. So long. You're Mr. Barry Wiley. That's right. My name's Coventry. Yes, I gathered that from your army of clerks. Clerks? Uh, oh, yes, clerks. Yes, quite so. Uh, will you take a seat? Thank you. You've been knocking around the world quite a lot during the last few months. Yes, I have. But how did you know? I've been tracing you. Come in, Peter. Sit down. Mr. Wilder, what was your family name on your mother's side? Uh, Trevanion. My mother was English, born here in London. I knew I was right. My boy, you are the sole heir of your uncle. <laughs> yes, I've heard that one. Now you're going to tell me my uncle died and left me a fortune. Exactly. 
He passed away about a year ago. I was his solicitor. An uncle and gone before even you I had him. He was a very eccentric man, your uncle. Uh, wasn't he, Peters? Most eccentric. Bar me in the head, if you ask me. Because nobody asked you. Now, with regard to this inheritance, it includes a large estate some 15 miles from here, near a town called Farrington. The place is called the Hawk's Nest. It's been the home of the Trevanians for many generations. Each new heir must sign an ironclad agreement never to let it pass from his possession. Here is the paper you must sign. But first, let me read you this. By ye blood that cometh from my heart, I swear to keep ye hawk's nest till death do us part. Now, what do you think of that? <laughs> the sentiment's swell, but uh, as poetry, it has a slight aroma. Yeah, I quite agree with you. But that was written by your ancestor, old John Trevanion, some 300 years ago. <whistles> Where do I sign? Right here, under the signatures of a dozen or so of your forefathers. But just a moment. It must be written in blood, remember? And we'll have to wait till I shave. <laughs> we'll fool the old boy. We'll use red ink. Red ink to get out of the red. That's a hot one. <laughs> Peter? That will be all, Peter. Very well, sir. I must tell you, Mr. Barry, that the hawk's nest has been unoccupied since the passing of your uncle. It might be in need of repair. Yes, it would. With me broke, almost. Perhaps I should have told you that the inheritance also includes some 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds? Yes, that in American money is approximately 50,000... Uh, uh, bucks. Uh, bucks, quite so. A goodly sum. I'll tell the world it's a goodly sum. Say, you're not kidding me, are you? Kidding? Oh, you mean am I spoofing you or pulling your leg? Yes, that's it. No, I can assure you that everything is, as you would say, on the up and up. Well, how about a little sugar on the line now? Sugar? Yes, you know, uh, an advance. Oh, I anticipated that. Here is 100 pounds, about 500 bucks. Well, mop my brow. Fellas, say I thought this place was vacant. Never mind the cooning now. Let's try and get along. I say, what are you doing in here? Be quiet. Will you get out of these grounds at once? Hey, who do you think you are? We shan't go into personality, sir. Get out. Listen, tough guy. It just happens I own this place. Will you get out of these grounds, or shall I be compelled to throw you out? Neither. As lawful owner of this place, I intend to stay here. We'll see about that. <laughs> Gregory. Who is this man? A trespasser. Trespasser, my eye. I'm on my own property. I'm afraid, my friend, that you're suffering from hallucinations, delusions of grandeur. I hope you're not violent. No, but I'm going to become violent in about three seconds. I have neither the time nor the inclination to argue with an obviously insane man. Now get out. Calm yourself, my dear boy. You're behaving exactly like your late uncle. But it is my property, isn't it? There's absolutely no doubt of it. All right, then what burns me up is being driven off the place at the point of two dogs, a butler, and an old guy with a gun. But there must be some mistake. I'll have them vacate immediately. Coventry speaking. Of course, sir. He's right here. I'll inform him. Something most extraordinary has happened. Don't tell me that Wild West show has moved out. No, but that was an offer to buy the hawk's nest. From the old guy with the gun? Well? I urge you to sell immediately. The price was an excellent one. But how can I sell? I signed an agreement to keep the hawk's nest as long as I live. Besides, I don't want to sell it. Ne Nevertheless, I advise you to sell at once and get out of England. Why? I'm not at liberty to inform you of that. There's something very phony about this. Phony? Yes, and I think you're mixed up in it. 
Are you accusing me of double dealing? Maybe it's only double crossing. I advise you to be careful what you say, young man. I'm going to find out what this is all about. Maybe you will find out. More than is good for you. I'll take my chances. I don't know who he was. He came to the house this afternoon and said he was the legal owner of Hawk's Nest. If that's true, it will certainly complicate matters. Complicate matters? Sir Bertram, it means our whole plan will be ruined and we'll be exposed. But you say he didn't get into the house. No. Fortunately, the dog set up an alarm in time. Gregory and I managed to frighten him off. In all probability, the man's an imposter. But we can't take that chance. I don't like this, Sir Bertram. You told me the place was vacant. There were no heirs, that we wouldn't be disturbed. How much more time do you need? Two days, two months, I can't tell. But I feel I'm on the verge of definitely finding out one way or the other. We can't stop now. But certainly, Sir Bertram, as Home Secretary, you must have influence enough to keep the man away. You go back to the hawk's nest. I'll attend to him. Thank you. Remember me? Remember you? I'm staying in London just to find you. Aren't you going to invite me in? I'm going to drag you in. I, uh, I want to talk to you. Do you mind? No, but I promise you I won't hear a word you say. I'm just going to look at you. Now, please be serious. And you're the girl I was supposed to forget. I want to ask you a favor. A very great favor, Mr. Wilding. Mr. Wilding? Buried to you, young lady. My name is Julie. Julie Kenmore. Delighted to know you, Miss Kenmore. Uh, Julie. Will you sit down? Tell me, how'd you happen to know my name and where to find me? Well, you see, your lawyer, I, uh... Mr. Coventry? Yes. The mystery thickens. But of course, about this favor, it's already granted. But you don't know what it is. Woman anything, even to the half of my kingdom. Or the hawk's nest? The hawk's nest? What do you know about the hawk's nest? I'm living there. Say... I'm living there. With two ugly dogs, an ugly butler, and an old guy with a gun? Yes. The old guy with a gun is my father. Oh. Then perhaps it was you who wanted to buy the hawk's nest. I didn't know anyone wanted to buy it. Were you at home this afternoon when I called? Yes. You saw me? Yes, from my porch. Why didn't you come out into the garden? I... I can't explain. Say, I thought all the mysteries were in books. Barry, I want you to promise me something. What is it? That you let my father and me stay at the hawk's nest for six months. If I had my way, you'd stay there forever. Thank you, Barry. And I'll come and see you every day. Oh, no. You must stay away until after we're gone. Stay away? Why? I... I can't tell you, but it's very important. Nothing is very important, except you. Please, Barry. I must go now. All right, but only until tomorrow. gentleman who dropped in yesterday and had luncheon. Yes, and I can still taste it. What? I hope that's no infection on the cooking, sir. Oh, no, Mrs. Shepherd. I meant it's so good I'm back for more. And you shall have it, sir. The fact is, I'd like to take a room. A room? Of course, sir. We'd be so happy to have you. Every, every. Uh, now, sir, if you'd kindly sign the guest book. You'll have the loveliest room in the house. Uh, Henry? Henry, uh, this is our new guest. 
a Mr. Wilding of New York, the husband, Mr. Chapel. How do you do? It's a great pleasure, sir. Uh, the Queen Hand Room, Henry. The Queen Hand Room, dearie? You heard me. <laughs> yes, dearie. Uh, this way, sir. Oh, never mind, I'll take this one, Mr. It's very kind of you, sir. Poor soul. It is arthritis. Oh, that's too bad. He calls it rheumatism, but I calls it arthritis. I likes to keep up to date. And very nice, Mrs. Shippen. Thank you, sir. I'm sure you'll be comfortable. That'll be all, Henry. Yes, dearie. Oh, thank you kindly, sir. I hope you noticed the chair, sir. It's a genuine Queen Hen. No, how can you tell? Well, the legs, of course. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I've never seen Queen Anne's legs. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Get Mr. Carpentry, the solicitor. Tell his lordship I'll be with him in exactly one hour. Very well, Sir Bertram. See that all the papers are in my portfolio. Yes, sir. Mr. Carpentry, Evans speaking. Oh, Sir Bertram, I'm honoured. Oh, I know that, sir. But he flatly refused to sell at any price. And I refused to take no for an answer. I expect immediate results. Is that clear? I know, sir, but he, he's, he's entirely disappeared. I, I, I don't know where he is. Oh, very well. I'll take care of the matter in my own way. Get me commission across of Scotland Yard. Barry! What are you doing here? I'm just coming to look over my castle. You must not come here. You promised you wouldn't. I promised nothing, excepting to let you stay here for six months. But don't you say... Come on, sit down. I want to talk to you. Oh, I wish I could make you understand. Understand what? That's just it. I can't tell you. All I can say is you must stay away from here. But why? Because you're in great danger. Well, I don't mind a reasonable amount of danger. Oh, Barry. Danger from what? The dogs, the butler, your father? I... I can't tell you. Not ghosts. Not good old chain-clanking ghosts. Now you're getting silly. Why am I? I must go in before father misses me. How about me? I'll miss you too. Maybe father won't miss you if he comes out with that gun. Not that I care, but how is your father? Barry, please go. And I beg of you, don't come back here. All right, I'll think it over. Goodbye, Miss Mystery. Good afternoon, Mr. Wilding. I hope she had a pleasant stroll. It is very pleasant. Uh, Mrs. Shippen, do you happen to know anyone living around here by the name of Kenmore? No. Not around Farrington. I understood they were living at the Hawk's Nest. The Hawk's Nest? Nobody's at the Hawk's Nest, not since Mr. Trevelyan went to his reward. I must have been misinformed. Nobody would live there, sir. It's haunted. That's interesting. I've always wanted to see a ghost, in the flesh, as it were. Well, I'd rather it should be your eyes that see them and not mine.
Stay where you are. So it's you again. What are you doing here? Defending my own property. Don't start that again. I was coming to talk to you when this lug and his buddy jumped on me. The other one got away. A desperate, murderous type if I ever saw one. But I'll cure that. Except the missing finger, sir. Oh. I think that'll make him easier to handle. <laughs> Do it. And her. Now you get out of here, I'll use the other end of the gun on you. It's about time the police stepped into this. If they do, they'll step right out again, I assure you. Now go. Bring him into the house. He'll be out of it in about five minutes. Oh, less. Who is that? A murderer, perhaps. Come, help me get ready. Dad, no, please. It would be an awful thing if we were found out. Danger. You must leave before they return. Now hurry. If you guys want to see him, it'll cost you ten bucks. Not me. I wouldn't pay ten bucks to see an earthquake. Me either. It's all yours, Dan. I never thought a guy take the chances you do. Want to play another hand? No, I'm sick of this. I'm fed up with everything. I'm fed up with this town, and all I want to do is get back to New York. Me too. I got a notion to hop the next boat back to Brooklyn. Well, that's perfectly all right with me. I can handle this job alone. Listen, Dan, if we knew what this thing was all about, maybe we'd feel more like sticking. Yeah, like last night. I take a beating and you get knocked cold. If it hadn't been for that day, it'd have slipped you the business. And what? And what do you care? I'm paying you good money for helping me, ain't I? You've been talking, big dough. Why don't you kick in with some of it? You play along with me and you'll have more dough than you ever saw before in your lives. Say, you ain't fixing to pay us off with phony dough, are you? Not, not your hammerhead. Okay, let's have some action. What do we do next? We make another little call at the Hawk's Nest, tonight. But you've got to work fast so that Kenmore Dame and her old man will beat us to it. Now, come on, let's play another little game, eh? You're sure this won't take much longer? I can't be certain, but I feel we should know something very soon. I hope so, because if my connection with this matter ever leaked out, I shudder to think of the consequences. I'm afraid it would be disastrous for us all. What about that young Biden? He's gone. Disappeared. Do you think he suspected anything? I'm sure he didn't. If he should turn up again, let me know. Good night. My car is waiting down the driveway with the lights out. Good night. Good night. Good night. Come there.
I ordered you to stay away from here. It's lucky for you I didn't take you seriously. You might not be here yourself. I don't need your help. Now, what you do needs a good poke in the nose. Sparrow, you don't understand. See, if anyone says that to me again, I'll do a swell imitation of that guy. Who is the poor fellow, anyhow? He, um, he's my brother. I'm treating him for a nervous disease. And the treatments consist of giving him shots in the arm and bouncing the butt end of a gun off his head, I imagine. You imagine too much. Barry, you must go. Sure. I'll go right to the police. And I'll even tell them that Sir Bertram's mixed up in this. How did you know? I saw him. I recognized him from his pictures in the paper. You mustn't tell anything. Why not? Oh, I see. It's something you don't understand. Yes. That's right, but I'm going to. Get me his wallet. It's not in the wallet. We knew what we were looking for. Maybe we could find it. Shut up. Come on. Just a moment, please. Gee, I'm glad to see you. It's the first time I ever heard of a cop being where he was needed most. Right you are, me young bucko. What were you doing in there? I own this place. You're drunk. Nobody owns the Ork's Nest. I tell you, I own it. Is that so? Well, just come along with me and tell it to the sergeant. Maybe he'd like to buy it from you. Will you two try and get this through your head? I'm the owner of the Ork's Nest. I was wrong. He's not sober yet. Is everybody crazy around here? I get slugged and robbed in my own garden and you pinch me for being tight. You just got through telling us the bandits didn't take anything. Most unusual kind of bandits, if you ask me. Listen, I've got a Scotland Yard with this. There's just one place for you to go, and that's home to bed to sleep this off. But there's nothing to sleep off but a bang in the head. And if ever you're caught on the hawk's nest again, I'll have you locked up. Now that's just dandy. And on what charges? Trespassing and suspected of being of unsound mind. Uns... Been stepping out, huh? You don't know the half of it. How did you get in here? <laughs> All locks are open to detectives, my friend. What new? Oh, nothing much. I happened to be in the neighborhood on a clue and your landlady told me to wait, said you'd gone for a stroll. And what a stroll. Well, I dropped by to hear the rest of that story about your being made a duke or something. Been crowned yet? <laughs> Have I? Feel that. What happened to you? Plenty since I saw you last. Will you get a load of this? Anybody at home? What are you trying to do, you young scamp? Wake up all the guests? Yes, I got a letter for him. Well, give it to me and be off with you. And the next time, don't try to tear down the house. And the payoff is, I'm not to say a word to a living soul or they'll judge me for being of unsound mind. Hmm. There must be something you don't understand. Oh, and now my best friend tells me. Well, it's got me. Maybe when I get my job done, I can give you a hand. It's probably Cinderella or Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, it's Mother Goose. This just kind to your special, sir. Thank you, Miss Shippen. Looks important. It's from Coventry, my lawyer. My dear Wilding, I enclosed something I just found on your late uncle's effects. I haven't the slightest notion what it is. Mm, looks like a piece of old parchment. Half of it's torn off. Well, you hear this. Incidentally, sir, you will be doing yourself a great service by selling the hawk's nest and returning to America. 
We can't make much out of this with half of it gone. It's in Old English. To my son, if need, top of ye great hall, fire and underwater, ye something Don Silvos. Hmm. Now don't tell me it's signed by King Arthur. No, John something. Last name's torn off. Well, that'd be John Trevanion. He built the hawk's nest three centuries ago. Hmm. Sounds like something out of Treasure Island. You know, more like John Trevanion doing his homework. <laughs> well, I wish I had time to help you go into that, Barry, but I got my own troubles. I'm sorry you can't stay, Tom. Yeah, so am I. See you later. That hang on to that might be important. Oh, sure. Yeah, maybe the key to a treasure hidden at Hawk's Nest. Uh -huh. And the girl and her father and a gang of thugs are trying to beat me to it. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. And I think you're touched in the head. No, no, that was you. Well, so long. Call me up. the idea of scaring the wits out of a guy? Well, I kind of got homesick for popcorn. It's a good thing I didn't let you have it. Can I help it because you got noise? You get that stuff already popped after this. Oh, popping it yourself is half the fun. You playing circus? Nope. Me and Jumpy just got a yen for popcorn. Well, forget it and listen to what I've got to say. Now, get this. Tom Starr is in London. How do you know? I saw him. In that inn where Wilding is staying. I just came from there. Did he see you? I wish I knew. That dick can see with his ears and the back of his head. So what? He ain't got nothing on us. Nah, that's not the idea. Then what is the idea? If he knows we're in town, he'll have us watched. Which won't do us a bit of good with that hawk's nest job. Look, Dan, why don't you break down and tell us what that hawk's nest job is all about? Sure, we're tired of working in the dark all the time. Are you trying to be funny? No, and I'd like to know what I'm doing. He's right. I'm going to know something or else I'm lambing out of this. Okay. There's a treasure hidden somewhere around Hawk's Nest. Gee, you mean they got some dough or something planted around there? Yeah. Any proof? Not exactly. Oh, it's a game, huh? A game? Take a look at that. A funny looking paper. Must be pretty old. That's parchment. Didn't you ever hear of it? Certainly. That's what they make lampshades out of. Don't make sense to me. Half of it is torn off. A phony looking spelling. Gee, the guy what wrote that sure must have been the champ hooky player at his school, huh? That, my fat head, old English. I'll bite. What does it yeah, say? It's pretty old. Hawk's Nest in Farrington. Turn ye clenched hand at ye fireplace. And under rock shall treasure. Now half the signature is gone, but the last part of it is Anion. Maybe you ought to turn it over to a mind reader. That's a good idea. See, I know a swell one down in Coney Island. All I need is the missing part, then I can read it all. W what is it, anyway? That's a cryptogram. Well, that's what I thought it was. Who do you think has got the missing part? Why, that wilding guy, of course. He inherited the place. That's why I've been tailing him. Well, what about the girl and the old man? I think they know about the treasure and are trying to beat wilding to it. I'm crossing him up, huh? Of course. Say. Maybe they're the ones that's got the torn off part of that paper. Did you think that all up by your little self? Why, certainly. I'm quick at getting things like that. Say, you know, the year I went to school... Where did you get a hold of that parchment thing? That's none of your business. Hello. Barry, is there no way to make you understand the danger you're in? Had a nice beating up, if that's what you mean. Beating up? By whom? As they say in court, by persons unknown. Unless you happen to know who did it. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, that isn't it at all. Then what is it? Well, I... I can't... Now, let's don't go into that I can't explain routine. Barry Wilding, if something terrible happens to you here, it will be your own fault. I've done everything I can to warn you. Forget it. By the way, how are you getting on with your little treasure hunt? Quite well, thank you. Aren't you a little handicapped without the other half of the cryptogram? Yes, aren't you? Sure. But if I hadn't promised to let you stay in this house for six months, I could find it without any cryptogram. Aren't you kidding? Come on, stop acting. 
Let's each contribute a missing half, find the treasure, and split it 50-50. That would be a great idea if I knew what you were talking about. Oh, I see. I can't explain. You mustn't ask. Really, you, you, you don't understand. I think I'd better leave you to your jokes. Yes? Commissioner Cross will see now, Mr. Starr. Thank you. Well, sir, happy to see you again. When we met in New York, Commissioner, I had no idea you'd soon be big boss of Scotland Yard. <laughs> Neither did I, frankly. Smoke? Well, thank you. Sit down. Over here on business, I see. That Chicago murderer. Hmm? No need to ask how you knew. Scotland Yard is always Scotland Yard, and no grass is allowed to grow on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. A fine compliment. And a good quip. Or a gag, you probably say. Need any help finding your murderer? Not yet. I came to talk to you about something else. It concerns a mysterious situation at a country estate called the Hawk's Nest. Tell me, Star. Do you uh, still eat at that little fish and chips place near Times Square? Occasionally. Hawk's Nest was inherited by a friend of mine, Barry Wilding. Have you ever tried our fish and chips over here? Well, not yet. No. Now, this young fellow was slugged while on his own premises and then warned to keep away or... Gosh, the wild tale of an imaginative kid who wants to be a hero. Oh, no, Commissioner. This is the truth. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, investigate. I think that place is headquarters for a gang of crooks. Nonsense. Suppose I told you that Sir Bertram was seen there under very suspicious circumstances. I should say you're stark raving mad. Well, I'm getting mad, but not the way you mean. Star, I advise you to confine your attention to your murderer. If that's the way you feel about it, I'll blow this case wide open myself. That is no case. And I warn you, if you try to meddle, you'll find yourself back in echo without your murderer. I think you're shielding a gang of crooks. Good day, sir. And what's more, I'll go to the American ambassador about this, I and we'll see. I said good day, sir. And I suggest that you watch your step. Good day, Commissioner. Oh, good morning, Wilson. Well, what's new? Nothing much. Oh, by the way, I see that Hector Munson had some sort of stroke in prison last night. He may die. Mm. Going to cheat the gallows, eh? <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> well, let's get down to business. Yeah, perhaps this may interest you. What time? I don't know exactly. I wish I could go in your place. Oh, for goodness sakes, Dad, stop worrying. London's only 15 miles away. Here's the stuff I need. Tell them to make a double strength this time. Never can tell what might happen. All right. Be sure no one sees you go in or come out. You'll be all right, won't you? <laughs> of course. Gregory and I can handle the situation. I'll take the path through the woods so I won't be seen leaving here. Good idea. Bye, Dad. Be seeing you. Hey, miss. I'd like to talk to you, Miss Kenmore. What about? Can't tell you here. We'll go inside. You can talk to me here. Oh, no. It's about your father. I don't think you'd want anyone to hear what I've got to say. All right.
Come in. Hello, Tom. Well, I see you still prefer a swan's end to a hawk's nest. Yeah, too many bad eggs in that nest. <laughs> what are you doing? Magnifying your troubles? No, looking into the future. What's on your mind, Tom, if any? Plenty. I'm burnt up. I've just come back from Scotland Yard where I've been shooting off my face about you. Wow, Tom, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, found that out. One crack out of me and that commissioner went as cold as a banker's heart. You're lucky. One crack on my head and I land in the hoose cow as a drunk. <laughs> Barry, I've got some great news for you. I could use some. You've got pirates in your family. And you've got bat in your belfry. <laughs> well, anyway, you did have. Old John Trevanion, who built the hawk's nest. What, a pirate? Like this? <sighs> yeah, that's the kind. I looked up your family history in the British Museum Library. Listen here, you nosy pup. Keep away from my family tree. Barry, I, I hate to tell you this, but seriously, I think that gang at Hawk's Nest is after something that belongs to you. Is Julie mixed up in it? I'm afraid she is. Oh, you're crazy, Tom. How about Sir Bertram Evans? Well, that I can't figure. But I'm certainly going to find out. But just what did he say? It wasn't what he said. It's what he hinted at. Did it sound as if he really knew something? Yes. Did he make any threats? Not in so many words. He just said if we ever saw him around here, to keep our mouth shut, or else. He's just a cheap bluff. He may not be so cheap if he really knows anything. Come, honey. Get ready for dinner. We'll think of some means to take care of him. Julie, what happened? Who did it? Oh, I don't know. Please take me back upstairs. Tell me, what happened? I was awakened by something. And I slipped down here into the living room. 
and saw two men there by the fireplace. I started to scream when somebody or something grabbed me around the throat. I must have fainted. Julie, you're going to get out of here tonight. Oh, no. I'll be all right. I'm not afraid. <laughs> oh, Barry, you must go now. And leave you here with that thing, whatever it is, not a chance. What's he doing here again? He had a nightmare. Imagined I was in danger. And forced himself in. But Julie! I don't intend to warn you again. Next time I'll shoot. I'll clear out. With pleasure. I've no desire to stay around a den of lunatics or crooks. Barry! I want you to promise not to come back here. I'll promise nothing. Is that final? It certainly is. But you won't tell anyone what's happened here. Don't make me laugh. Of course I will. Will you wait until tomorrow afternoon? Why tomorrow afternoon? Meet me in the garden where you saw me yesterday. I'll explain. All right, I'll be there. Are you there? Cross speaking. Sorry to disturb you, Cross. It's about Wilding. He's been here again. I want you to get him out of the way. That settles it. We'll attend to his case. Thank you. Dad, was that really necessary? Of course. We can't take any more chances with that meddlesome young fool. I've bad news for you, sir. Yeah, you're just that time. Miss Julie asked me to tell you she couldn't meet you here, sir. Well, why not? She's ill. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that all she said? You are to come to the house to see her. After her old man promised to shoot me? <laughs> oh, that's a laugh. She said to tell you her father's in his room and won't disturb you. On my word, sir, I'm telling you the truth. Well, there's only one way to find out. Oh, no. <laughs> you go first. I'll inform Miss Julie you're here, sir. Thank you. Well, I found out. I walked right into it, didn't I? Congratulations, Miss Kenmore. And you too, sir. You'll pardon me if I don't shake hands on it. Take him upstairs and lock him up. Very well, sir. Well, well. Cozy little spot you have here. You'll be comfortable enough if you behave yourself. May I inquire to whom owe the pleasure of this little romp? You'll find out. Good day, sir. Well, there it is. Gee, Dan, nothing can stop us now, huh? I hope not. Let me take a gander at that thing. To my sunny ad hoc's nesty. If the needy arise, turny ye clinched handy at ye toppy. Nice talk. Here, give me that. Hey, Jumpy. We found the other part of that crippled gam. Where'd you find it? In his wallet, laying at the bottom of those steps where he found the dame. Well, now that we know about the underground tunnel coming in from the outside, it should be a cinch. <laughs> it sure was a break finding that subway, huh? Or we'd be down there yet. Sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you, Miss Kenmore. 
Who are you? I'm Tom Starr, a friend of Barry's. Oh, yes. You're the detective. Barry's told me about you. I see you, Miss Kenmore. Barry telephoned me he was going to meet you this afternoon. He hasn't been seen since. Is that surprising? Very, considering that he told me he intended to ask you to marry him. Get out of this place. I was ill this afternoon and couldn't meet him. Do you know where he is? I think your question has been answered. Good evening, Julie. Sir Bertram, let me present Tom Starr, a friend of Mr. Wilding. How do you do? How do you do? I recognize Sir Bertram. I imagine it would be embarrassing to a man of your position if the public should find out about your being here. What do you mean, sir? In plain words, I think you're mixed up in whatever's going on around here, including the disappearance of Barry Wilding. I think, sir, you've said entirely too much. You're right. From now on, I intend doing something. And I'll see to it that Scotland Yard does the same. Good night, sir. Hey, Julie, hadn't you better come in the house? It's getting a little chilly. I'll trouble you to put your hands in the air, Mr. Sharp. Well, what's the idea of this? I warned you. Bring him along. For a commissioner of Scotland Yard, you're certainly making a fine mess of things. You're taking my advice, sir. This wouldn't have happened. I was expecting you, Sir Bertram. I've sent Gregory to bring him here. Can we get any sense out of him, do you think? Well, you'll be it for yourself. Don't you know me, old fellow? Very strange. I was sure he'd be able to talk. Not much progress here. Oh, but there has been. A great deal. Although he still has these lapses, they're becoming more infrequent. I think I'd better come back tomorrow night. No, please wait a few minutes. He may snap out of it. You must leave at once. I'll be back tomorrow. All right, but I can't promise you anything. That'll be all. Very good, sir. Good morning, Sir Bertram. You're looking a little dragged out. Yes. I shall be glad when it's over. I realize this whole affair has been a great strain on you. It still is. It's a bad job that young fellow Wilding and his detective friend got into this. Yes. I live in constant dread of discovery. Well, I see by the times that Hector Munson died last night. Well, that's one way to elude the gallows. It's a very pathetic case. Good morning. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Good morning. You've met Sir Bertram Evans. Yes, I have. Good morning, so I hear. <laughs> what is this all about? Gentlemen, aren't you being a bit childish? Uh, Mr. Starr, I am fully aware of your great ability and high standing as a police officer in America. Thank you, Sir Bertram. The Commissioner and I have decided to give you a complete explanation of what must seem to be 
A very extraordinary and unsavory affair. Well, that certainly might help. But first, I want your word of honor that you will respect our confidence. You have it. Please go on. Well, in the first place, you no doubt remember... Come in. Hello, Barry. Tom, will you please postpone playing hide-and-seek with that murderer and give me a hand? My friend, bury your soul. Well, to begin with, I've lost my half of the cryptogram. Where? I don't know. It was in my wallet. <laughs> Goodbye, Treasure Island. What's more, I can't stand any more of this mystery. It's in my hair. Barry, why don't you sell the hawk's nest, forget all this business, and go home? Well, look who's talking. After the way you were all hopped up about finding a treasure? Oh, well, that was hooey. You certainly changed your tune quick. What's come over you? A wave of common sense, maybe. You never can tell. And you won't help me? No. I'm going to nab that killer and go home. Hey, who is this murderer, anyhow? His name is Dan Wharton, sometimes called Three-Fingered Dan. Three? Hey, that's funny. One of those baboons that's been shoving me around has only three fingers. Are you sure of that? Well, yes, I saw him. Dan Wharton, cryptogram, Chicago book collector. Great job. I got it. So your mind isn't giving way, is it? No, no, it's been AWL. It's just coming back. You don't tell me. I tell you, I've got it. If it's cops and robbers, can't I play too? No, no, you haven't got a gun. Oh, yes, I have over at the end. Be a good fellow and scram. Well, where are you going? I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. You mean three fingers with one bullet? Well, call me tomorrow. Yes, and that's not all I'll call you. <laughs> so long. You made very good time, Mr. Starr. Please sit down. Thank you. We can speak freely now. Sir Bertram has told me everything. Yes, he told me he had. Tell me, Mr. Starr, have you heard from Barry today? Yes, I advised him to go back to the States right away. I... I hope he doesn't take your advice. Why not? I have my reasons. <laughs> I think I can guess what they are. I just received a note from him. You did? Yes, here it is. Value life. Do not remain at Hawk's Nest tonight. Barry Wilding. Barry didn't write that, but I think I know who did. Who? The man I'm looking for. I think he's coming here tonight and wants you out of the way. Well, I intend to stay here regardless of who sent it. All right. Now, I'll tell you why I'm here. Will you put me up for the night? Of course. I don't want anyone to know, not even your own father. I can arrange that. Good. I have my reasons. Shall we go? Too bad to disappoint you again, but he wasn't in Cecile. Can't be helped. Early morning is the best time to judge his condition. Well, I think I'll be getting back to London. Why don't you and Cross stay here tonight? Plenty of accommodations, aren't there, Julie? Oh, yes, of course. It suits me. What about you, Cross? Quite. Uh, Gregory. Yes, sir. The gentleman will stay here for the night. Very well, sir. Good evening. I'll be turning in right away, if you'll excuse me. So will I. Show them to their rooms. Very good, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Listen, you guys. Now we can round up the others and take them down there, one at a time. I'm asking you for the last time. Where's that stuff? I've told you I don't know. I suppose you don't know what this thing is, either. 
I never saw it before. Don't give me that. And what are you guys here for? I can't tell you. Then I'll tell you. You're here for the same thing as I am. That pirate swag. Pirate swag? I'm positive father knows nothing about it. You're wasting your time, Dan. Let me give him the works. Not yet. Get away from me, fool. That's poison gas. Poison gas, eh? That's swell. Maybe this will make you talk. Turn that off, or we'll all be killed. I tell you, there's no treasure around here. This thing says there is. You found it. Now come on, give, or I'll throw that valve open. You'll murder us all. I see you get the idea. I'll take it slow. That'll give you plenty of time to say your prayers. says the swag is down here somewhere. All right, you guys, start digging. Where? Over there. We'll dig up this whole place if we have to. All right, you guys, reach. face the wall. Come on, get going. Oh, so you're the guy that stole it. I didn't lift it, I found it. <laughs> All right, now where's the girl? In the next room. That other tank would destroy the poison instantly if we could only get in there. I'll fix that. <laughs> the man who gave you such timely help is Hector Munson, the inventor, who killed his assistant about a year ago. I read in the paper where Hector Munson died in prison last night. I arranged those stories. You see, Wilding, Hector Munson and I had been great friends for many years. When he committed the crime, I was quite sure that his mind had broken down under the strain of his work, that he killed the man in an insane moment. And I shared that belief. I also knew he was about to complete a formula which would instantly destroy all poison gas. Oh, I'm beginning to see. I determined that the world must not be deprived of a discovery which would save thousands, even millions of lives. So I understand. With Cross's help, I had Munson secretly removed from prison and placed under the care of Dr. Kenmore here. Dr. Kenmore? Yes. The world's foremost specialist in mental cases. You see, Barry, the hawk's nest seemed an ideal place to work. It was vacant and without an owner. At least so we thought. Under Dr. Kenmore's skill, Munson has not only gradually recovered his mind with occasional lapses, but also completed his discovery, which will be Hector Munson's gift to England and to the world. We all apologize, Barry, for being a little uh, severe at times. <laughs> we merely tried to frighten you away until uh, Munson could be moved to my sanitarium. But aren't you on the spot, Sir Bertram, in explaining all this to the public? Mm, I'm quite sure, Cross and I will have no difficulty in justifying our action. We only did what we were convinced was our patriotic duty. And incidentally, enabled me to do mine, nabbing three-fingered Dan and his little playmates. Thanks to you, Barry, Sing Sing can celebrate the return of its charming treasures. Oh, speaking of treasures.
Sure. That reminds me. Barry, let's see that cryptogram. Hmm? There it is. Yes, we ought to be able to solve that thing. <laughs> well, listen. If need arise, turn ye clenched hand at top of ye fireplace. <laughs> Come on, let's have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so that's what operates the panel. Oh, so far, so good, eh? Come well, on, well, John, might be something in this <laughs> Come along. <laughs> Gee, wouldn't it be funny if we didn't find the treasure? Yeah, think of the income tax I'd have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. It says under fire. Perhaps it means the fireplace. We're right under it. And under rock. That must mean under the ground. Yes, it says underwater, too. Where's the water? It's damp down here. And it looks as though a stream ran through here once. Well, why don't you try digging around here? Yeah, give me this. Yeah. You say that's pretty hard. hard there. Hey, wait a minute. Here's something. Oh. Yes, there it is. Well, look, look at that. Get your hand. Give us a hand. There we go. Why, it's well, a bomb! You reach it, Barry? Well, look! Oh, oh, look. Somebody catch me, I'm fainting. Oh, Barry, what are you going to do with your treasure? I'm going to marry her. <laughs>